Who is the coolest G.I. Joe or the coolest licensed figure? Well, we all have our opinions, but if we talk about code names, who's cooler than a guy named after a refrigerator? Let's talk about William the Fridge Perry. First, thanks for watching JLS Comics. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our weekly content. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into our story. William Perry was born in Aiken, South Carolina, just like his real-life counterpart. While not explicitly said in G.I. Joe lore, we can then also assume that the G.I. Joe version of William Perry then also went to Clemson before being drafted to the NFL where he played with the Chicago Bears before, in this continuity, joining the United States Army. It's important to note that Real World Perry was never in the armed forces, and so this was one of the few departures from his real story, which also separated him from other licensed figures and those who used others' likenesses and who frequently changed quite a bit. When Perry, at 6'2 and a biscuit shy of 350 pounds, was still at Clemson, his friend Ray Brown, another defensive lineman, could barely fit with Perry and his laundry basket in an elevator. Man, you're about as big as a refrigerator, Brown said to Perry, and from that moment on, the nickname stuck. He likely then would have gone to Fort Jackson in South Carolina to complete U.S. Army Physical Fitness School, eventually becoming a master fitness instructor and guided countless soldiers through physical readiness training ensuring a higher state of combat readiness, whether during peacetime duty or in wartime conditions. Not only that, but ensuring combat readiness helped reduce injuries and discharges, which became all the more vital when Perry transferred to the G.I. Joe team, where Joecom was comparatively a small force and each operator vital to the force projection capabilities of the G.I. Joe team. But this training was unlike anything he did with the U.S. Army. It was nearly the toughest out there in post-basic, post-AIT training, nearly on par with Ranger School or BUDS, but this course was unique. The Fridge is quoted as saying, If lacrosse is the little brother of war, football must be the rich uncle. Notice the similarities. Strategy, offensive and defensive, teamwork, violence, camaraderie, television coverage, parades for the victors, and humiliation for the defeated. His file card also notes that the Fridge likes to see the looks on troops' faces when they look up from the mud and see who they have to get past to pass the course. As his file card also indicates, the G.I. Joe obstacle course contains only one obstacle, the Fridge. He'd have green shirts tackling standard obstacle course elements before they got to him like fences, pipes, and water traps. The Fridge's secondary specialty is listed as Special Services. The U.S. Army Special Services Agency was the entertainment branch and would host and help facilitate special entertainment events like concerts, movies, and special guest appearances that included names like Sammy Davis Jr., Clint Eastwood, Desi Arnaz, Ed Asner, Leonard Nimoy, Dick Van Dyke, and many, many others. This agency was stood up by the United States Army in 1945 and would be critical in maintaining troop morale, especially with those forward deployed to Europe during the Cold War. It's helped with mental health to complement physical health. It really is a vital mission and something integrated as far back as the Continental Army in 1775, which is now overseen by the U.S. Army Installation Management Command via MWR and Army Entertainment. They even offer joint service, full service hotels like Dragon Hill Lodge in Korea or Shades of Green at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. And with G.I. Joe, Sergeant Perry borrowed from his football days and took on the codename The Fridge. Precedents had already been set for quote-unquote real-world celebrities to find their way into the G.I. Joe ranks via licensing agreements for physical licensing and names and to make them combat fitness instructors and PE teachers. The first was another sergeant, the famously named Sergeant Slaughter, a WWE superstar whose larger-than-life personality both inside and outside the ring earned him a spot on the Joe's roster as a PE instructor. Sylvester Stallone almost joined the team as Rocky Balboa, targeted for a 1987 release, but that deal fell through, following to Coleco's Rambo the Force of Freedom, but a failed deal which gave birth to a Cobra instructor named Big Boa. So Hesbro was clearly on the lookout for larger-than-life personalities who could fit in with the product line and make guest appearances as fitness instructors. In 1985, Mike Ditka handpicked Clemson player William Perry as the Chicago Bears' first-round draft pick, which became a point of contention between Ditka and the Bears' defensive coordinator, Buddy Ryan. Despite that, the Fridge played at Super Bowl XX, scoring a touchdown in the third quarter and helping the Bears win 45-10 over the New England Patriots. Funny enough, Steve Grogan was on the Patriots team at Super Bowl XX for that loss, and his is the jersey that G.I. Joe's bazooka wears so proudly. Someone you'll see does also have ties with William the Fridge Perry. The run-up to the Super Bowl during regular season play made the Chicago Bears superstars, going 15-1, and they became so prolific. Fans of everyone in every city, they even created a song that hit the Billboard Hot 100, and that song was later nominated for a Grammy. That song was the Super Bowl Shuffle. William the Fridge Perry became a standout amongst all of that, racking up, among other accomplishments, five sacks during the regular season, 
and so he was perfect to monetize in the form of a collectible action figure. He was powerful, a pop culture icon just like his entire team, and he was also a happy-go-lucky, friendly, and just an all-around generally good role model in those early years for kids. In 1986, the fridge was part of the 20-man battle royale at WrestleMania 2 with superstars like Andre the Giant and Bret the Hitman Hart and other pro ball players like Jim Covert, Ernie Holmes, Bill Fralick, Harvey Martin, and Russ Francis, many of whom would get their own action figures with Kenner's starting lineup line. But not Perry. He would get pulled into a Hasbro license. That year, he also showed up on the A-Team with Hulk Hogan, a wrestler who famously feuded with real-world version of G.I. Joe's Sergeant Slaughter, and it was Slaughter and Hogan who would famously battle years later at WrestleMania 7. The Sergeant Slaughter figure was from 1986, and so in 1987, Hasbro released that William the Fridge Perry action figure, which was available from Hasbro Direct from 1987 through 1989 in the form of mail-in fridge special proof of purchase coupons, where you would need five of them to get your fridge figure, although calling that 900 number with dad's credit card help too. If you got the fridge's combat specialty code from the phone call and wrote it on the return form, you'd only need four proof of purchase certificates instead of five. When fridge ended in 89, Hasbro launched Captain Gridiron in 1990, another football-themed figure. But it wasn't this simple. It was Bob Prupis, the vice president of Boys Toys at Hasbro, who was key in convincing the fridge to sign his likeness over for the G.I. Joe line. Bob and the team flew the fridge out to Hasbro headquarters and met with him and his wife, and it was then that they convinced him to be a G.I. Joe, something that didn't take a lot of convincing. Apparently, he was thrilled about it. And this is according to G.I. Joe product manager Kirk Pozigian from an interview with the 3D Joe's website. And they timed the release for that season's Super Bowl as well. Perry's figure came with an iconic jersey and an even more iconic tooth gap with a massive black flail equipped with a football-shaped head as his only weapon. He didn't come with the regular cards. Because he was a mail-away, he came with a red backing, which had the file card on the other side along with the catalog. And that file card also included his autograph. And this all came inside of a manila folder. There is a couple different versions of the fridge though. One has silver on his belt buckle and the other has brown. Then starting in 1988, the fridge was available via a few mail away offers. Operation Blackout featured a bazooka and the fridge set which you could buy for $3.50 each or $6 for the set. And this was their story. Fridge and Bazooka had discovered a line of Cobra bunkers guarding an arsenal of Cobra weapons. They also discovered Serpentor and his air chariot leading an invasion army against the G.I. Joe's overseas headquarters. And so Fridge and Bazooka were guarding a G.I. Joe checkpoint called Checkpoint Alpha. In fact, the catalog called Bazooka the Fridge's right-hand man. Though this is a deviation from the Sunbow animated series where Bazooka is basically the right-hand man of Alpine. North Atlantic called the Fridge the original one-man wrecking crew. It said this monster of muscle is the ultimate fighting machine, and he likes breaking down walls almost as much as he likes busting cobra heads. And I find this funny because Sun Times called Real World William the Fridge Perry, quote, the best use of fat since the invention of bacon. G.I. Joe Command then paired up the fridge again with Bazooka for the end of Slaughter mail away. This time to double team Cobra and lead an all-out search for Sergeant Slaughter, who'd been kidnapped by Cobra Commander, his officer, and Major Blood. In Top Secret, the Fridge had gotten a Top Secret communique from the Sarge at Recon Unit 1 regarding Cobra's dastardly Operation Headbanger, which was a plot to embed hidden messages in heavy metal music to turn ordinary citizens into hardcore criminals. The Fridge was tasked with leading six platoons of men in APCs, as amphibious personnel carriers here, in a rear assault on a hidden Cobra encampment in the Andes Mountains of South America, which housed high-powered radio transmitters. The Fridge was to bring the 105mm cannons atop the APCs to bear on the Cobra bunkers around the perimeter of the Cobra encampments and the main installation. I guess this was all, you know, field training or something like that. The fridge was now $3.50 with flag points or $4.25 without flag points. So you can now buy them this way instead of with the fridge proof of purchase certificates. But the offers were still mail away. And then many years later, the fridge did make a brief Blink and You'll Miss It comic book appearance at G.I. Joe A Real American Hero with issue 214. This was at the All Hands on Deck ceremony of the pit after Snake Eyes was killed in action during a heated battle with Serpentor that resulted in them both perishing by falling off a ledge and exploding with a grenade. This appearance, however, was primarily as an easter egg. The fridge was not animated for Sambo or Deke, creators of the G.I. Joe A Real American Hero animated series, as the timing of his release made it impossible. Sunbow's series ended in 86, and Deke's began in 89, so the fridge filled the gap in between those dates. However, the fridge was animated for the television commercial advertising his figure. He even had his own song for the commercial, where it said he's getting mad, he's getting mean, he's breaking the line for the G.I. Joe team. 
There we get to see his football flail in action as he swings it to take down a whole group of Cobras. And so with that, our story draws to a close, meaning that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.